Let's be done with that and perhaps we'll move it to the second spot after Keystone. Come on, amazing, right? A cool thing about Keystatic is how it lets you make parts of your code base editable without really having to change anything in your code. Let me try to demonstrate that with a real production website. This is the ThinkMill website. Uh, it's currently live in production. And if I go in the footer here and go visit the labs page, what I want to try to do today is take these projects like Keystatic, Keystone, etc., and make them editable via Keystatic. So it's worth noting the same open source projects are also pulled in the open source page right here. And this project is already using Keystatic. I have implemented the blog to work with Keystatic already. But what I want to show you is how simple it can be to migrate some data that is hard coded in the site into Keystatic. This is the code for the labs page of the Astro website. And you can see we're importing here this open source project from a JSON file. And if I scroll down, we'll find the place where we iterate over this open source project. Now, if we go look at these open source projects, you can see it's a JSON array. Uh, and then we have a series of objects with a name, description, GitHub user, links, which is another array of objects uh, that repeats over and over for each entry. We're currently in the main branch here. So what I want to do is create a new branch. Let's call it open source data. And we're going to make the necessary changes to make this open source data editable. This is a real production project, not a demo that I've prepared for this video. So that means that it comes with its own little production quirks. So for example, we have the SRC folder, which is where the Astro site lives. But the Keystatic is sitting in its own Keystatic app here. This is what made the most sense back when we installed Keystatic on this project. So let's work with that. I'll make sure I can run the project locally. So I'm going to start two dev servers, one for the Astro site, npm run dev. This is from the root of the project on port 3000. And I'm also going to start the Keystatic server, npm run dev. This one is going to run on port 4000 and runs from inside this Keystatic subdirectory. And you can see on port 3000, we have the front end website. And on 4000, we have our Keystatic backend. You can see there's already blog posts and a few other content types set up. And what we're going to add now is the open source projects. Technically, this is a collection of entries, right? We have one for Keystatic, one for Keystone, and we might want to create a collection, but we can also take the singleton approach. In this video, I want to try to mirror the existing code as much as possible, so check this out. This is the open source.json file, which is what Astro is currently pulling in to display the data, and this is an array of objects. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to create a singleton, and it's going to have a field which is an array of objects. I'll go and find the Keystatic config for this project. And this is where we have collections for tags, authors, blog posts, etc. So I will collapse the collections. And here I'm going to create my first singleton. And we'll call this one open source. So this is a singleton. Let's make sure it's imported at the top. Yep. And so here we want as much as possible to mirror the existing data structure that we have in our code base. And so now we're going to go through the cool process of creating a schema for our open source singleton that mirrors this shape right there. We're going to use the help of TypeScript and GitHub Copilot quite a lot here. Before we create the schema, let's give our singleton a label. <laughs> yep, Copilot to the rescue. And we also want to give it a path. So here, this is going to be very interesting. We want Keystatic to take over the control of this JSON file. And so this file sits in src slash data slash open source that JSON. And so we could go src slash data slash open source. And let's make sure we specify the format to JSON. And just to make TypeScript happy, I'll add a schema empty object for now to get rid of the squigglies. And so that's all we need to tell Keystatic to take over this path, which is this file, and use that schema instead. Now, there's a problem with that. If I go and visit the admin UI, you can see that we have a new open source singleton. But we're going to have an issue here because we have some data in that file that doesn't match the expected schema from Keystatic, which is nothing. So for now, let's change the path here to open source dash new. And if I hit save, now Keystatic is happy because the schema represents the empty schema, which is what it's expecting. And we'll get back to that and eventually update that path. So let's start creating our schema. I'll scroll down a bit. 
And so we want to start with an array field at the root, and we'll call that items. So fields.array. And immediately inside, we want a fields.object, which is going to contain all of these properties. Fields.object. Let's close that before you forget. And so our first property is going to be a name, which is a string. So name, which is a fields.text. The next field is a description, which is also a text field. Maybe this one can have multi-line sets to true. And let's stop right there and save and see what's happening. You can see already we have this items field, which is an array field, which means I can add a series of objects that I've created. So first thing, hello world, and I'll add this. And let's just create that for now. And remember, we've set the path to open source dash new. So if I open the project tree, I should find a new file called open source dash new. And it's our array of items, which is the start of it. You can see that we have this top level items key that is not present here, but we'll work around with that. There's no problem. So let's continue building the shape of our object here. All right, so after the description, I want the GitHub user repo and status. GitHub user, which is fields.txt once again. Yep, GitHub repo, thank you. Next is the status, status. So here, indeed, we could use a fields.select. You can see there's experimental. Uh, what else do we have? Community maintained, community maintained, community maintained, uh, active. So it looks like there's three. Uh, there might be more, but let's go with a select field here with these three possible values. So fields.select, the label is going to be status. The options are going to be an array of objects with a label, uh, yes, active, but we want the value to actually have an uppercase too. We don't want archived. The next one is community. Uh, that's the label and the value is actually community maintained. And the last one is experimental. Experimental. Let's close the array. And we also need to pass a default value. Let's go with active here. That's looking pretty good to me. And then after the status, we have an optional links array. I say optional because some entries like this one don't have it. This is an array field with an object inside, once again, nested in our array of objects. So let's create that. So scroll down and here we're going to have links, which is a field that array, yes. Inside of it, field that object. Let me close that before I get confused. And the first field is not label, but name, which is a text field. And then we need the URL. Uh, ooh, exactly that. Thank you very much, Copilot. And I think this covers everything that we need. Let's give it a save. With a bit of luck, everything's working. There will be a little issue. It's not really an issue, but a UX thing. We haven't yet passed an item label to our array field, so it's going to default to item. Let me show you what I mean. If I now go and edit my item one, you can see we have all these fields that we need. Hello, HTTPS, google.com, but everything here is called item one. If I save this, this is called item one. And we kind of want to have a more descriptive label for each item. For example, display the name field first thing. So if I go down in my nested uh, array object here, we describe the field. And after the field object, we can pass an object, which is where we can set the label to, yes, this is links. And we have this item label uh, that is not right. We want props.fields.name, and we want the value like that. And we're going to do the same for the top level one, which is this array here. After the big object down here, we're also going to pass a label. This one is actually called items because these are items, but the item label, we're going to use the value of the name field instead. So this is a small addition, but now you can see that we see whatever we pass to the name. Hello. Uh, and here as well, if I add some links, website, summonswiss.com, uh, it's going to say website. So it's a little bit more pleasant to use. So now is when things get really interesting. So check it out. We're going to have a look at what we're currently generating, and then we're going to flip that file name, remember we set it to open source new. We're going to point key static with the schema 
to the existing data.json file and see what happens. So if I hit save here, and we go back in our code base and look for the open source new JSON file, you can see that we have a very similar structure with two entries to what is the actual website data here. Now, the key difference is this is an array of objects at the root, where this is an object that has an items array of objects. So we kind of one level nested inside here, and we might have to do that small modification here just to make it work. But honestly, this is not much of a change. So let's try that. What I want to do is point key static to this file now, try to read this JSON instead of that JSON that it's currently managing here. So we're going to temporarily break things, but we're going to fix them really quickly. So in the key static config at the path definition here, I'm going to go back to open source, which is that file here. So let's save that. And key static is very likely going to complain. Yep. And what it's trying to say is, I am looking for an items key, but you give me just an array and I don't know what to do with it. Let's do a tiny change to our JSON here. I'm going to have a key of items and let's close the object here. I think that when I save, it's going to format it to JSON. Yep. And now we have the exact uh, syntax. And if I refresh the page, check this out. Boom. Seriously, this is cool. Have you seen what just happened? We have pointed key static to the existing data file that is consumed by the website. And we now have all of it editable inside our key static uh, admin UI. There's the websites. I never did this. This is coming from the website uh, data. This is amazing. How cool is that? If you think about it, we did change the data structure a little bit which means we did break the website a little bit. I'm on the labs page here running locally. And if I hit refresh, I'm expecting everything to break. And yep, uh, the site has crashed. And if I check here, you can see uh, it is not happy. And if I try restart the server with npm run dev, it might start. But if I refresh the page, we're going to have a problem. It's trying to map over this array of objects, but now we've added this object with an item property at the parent level. So we need to do a little code adjustment if I go to the labs page here. So here where we import the open source project, we actually want to drill down to the items key. So what I can do is reach for the nested items property and call it as open source project. And so like this, it's going to set the items nested key of the object to be this open source project, which is what we are then mapping through. So with just that little change, if I go back to the page, you can see it's already working. And here are my now key static driven open source projects. And I'll prove you that this comes from key static in a minute. Before I forget, if I go to the open source page, we have the same problem. This is also consuming this open source data. Let's do the same for the open source page. I will import here items as open source projects. Hit save and we're cooking. All right, so let's mark a little pause here to appreciate what's happening. With the tiny bit of changes to our code base, we've now made our open source data editable through key static without changing much at all. So let's look at the diffing in our Git branch to see what we've done. First, in our key study config, we've recreated the schema that represents the shape of this JSON data for the open source project. Let me make that a little bit wider. We've created that open source, that new file, which was actually a temporary placeholder while we were building the schema. So we can actually delete that one. This is the data that was existing. Looks like a huge diff, but all we've done is nested our array in an object with an items key. And then in both the labs and open source page, we've imported these items instead of the root level array. That's it. That's all we've done. And now Astro is still consuming the same data, but we can edit it through key static. But we can also edit it through the data like we used to. So we haven't changed the workflow and told developers, well, now you have to use the CMS because that's what we do. You can still do the exact same thing if you want, 
but someone who doesn't want to go into an array of objects to change stuff can do it through the keystatic admin UI. So to drive home the point of how really cool this is, let's make a demo where we edit the content in keystatic and watch the UI change, and then we'll go in the code and change this and watch the UI change again. I'm using Arc browser, so here I have this nice split view. We have key static on the left and the front end on the right. So let's go in key static and we're going to change the text to key static from key static. And let's add a emoji with some sunglasses. Let's be done with that. And perhaps we'll move it to the second spot after Keystone. So now check this out. This is running on port 4000. This is running on port 3000. When I save here, it's going to live reload and update the content from Keystatic. Ready? Boom! Check it out. Keystatic from Keystatic is now in second place. And if we go visit the open source page, of course, the same has happened. Amazing, right? Come on. Amazing, right? Back in the code, if I go to the open source.json file, let's scroll down to the second one that says now Keystatic from Keystatic, and instead change it to PS Code and hit save. And when I go back to the browser, the front end will already have updated. I need to refresh key static to show the changes. And if I go to the labs page, it's also changed. So I think we're ready to open a PR to merge this to production. Let's just clean up the little demo we've done. And I want to make one important change. Here, I will bring key static back to the first position and go and edit to remove that demo text. But the other important change I want to do is change this badge from experimental here to active because key static is very much active at this point in time. So I'm going to go done and save and key static should go back to the top with the active badge. And with that, I'm going to commit my changes Add a commit message saying open source data in key static. I will publish my branch. And let's go to GitHub to watch that pull request and one more time look at the changes that we've made. So here's my open source data branch. I will prepare a pull request, but first let's look at the changes. We've created a singleton for the open source data, which is an array of items with the object matching the structure that we need. We have replaced, again, it seems like a full file diff, but we have nested this array of objects inside an items key. Otherwise, this is the exact same data. And in both places where we consume that data, we have updated the import to drill down into the items key to have the array of objects. That's it. So let's go to the top and we'll add YouTubing my way through implementing the open source data into Keystatic. And I will open the pull request. All right, chances are the next time you visit the ThinkMill website, the open source data is going to be managed through Keystatic or through JSON, depending who you're asking the question to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.